But ye, O Lord, are a shield about me, my glory, and the lifter of my head. I cried aloud to the Lord, and he answered me from his holy hill. I lay down and slept. I woke again, for the Lord sustained me. Psalm chapter 3, verses 3 to 5. Abba Father, our eternal God, You are from everlasting to everlasting. You are the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. You are sovereign, faithful, and good. You are the only one who sees the beginning and the end of this pandemic. Present things may not look bright and hopeful right now from our perspective, but enable us to see them from your eternal perspective. Help us not to be too focused on the situation at hand, for it will only sow seeds of fear and anxiety. Train our eyes and hearts, Lord, to see beyond ourselves and to always fix our gaze on you. Enable us to deliberately seek you out and like the psalmist, cry out our hearts to you because you always answer us from your holy hill and meet the deepest needs of our being. Even when some of us are in bed of illness, when we are in our weakest physically and emotionally, enable us, our Jehovah Rapha, to declare you as our ultimate healer, the restorer of our wholeness. We declare that you are our shield, our glory, and the lifter of our head. 
You will cover us with your wings and protect us with your holy blood. Nothing can touch and harm us without your divine permission. Lord, we always trust in your goodness. Indeed, nothing not even sickness and death can separate us from your unfailing love, our Abba Father. Thank you, O Lord, for continually sustaining us in all aspects. Before the pandemic, during the pandemic, and even beyond it. Each night, we can lay down and sleep in peace because we know that we will wake up with new mercies every morning. We are still here because of your faithfulness and you still have a purpose for us on this earth. And even when you choose to take us home, it will still be victory and glory for us because we will be eventually in your holy presence. Because you are our Abba Father, and we are your children, there is nothing to fear. Whatever situation will always be victory for us, because you have already overcome even that itself. Today, Lord, we commit to you, Pastor Arnell, your faithful servant and messenger. Empower him with your spirit that his words will be your words, your message that will meet us in our deepest need. Continue to work in and through us to make your salt and light, to reflect your attributes in the way we live our lives. Keep us connected to you, the great vine, that we will continue to bear fruit that will last. May our lives give you all the glory and honor that you deserve. In the glorious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Tithing puts God first. Deuteronomy chapter 14 verse 23 says the purpose of tithing is to teach you always to put God first in your lives. We don't give God money because He needs it, but rather because it teaches us to put God first above all else. I give my tithes and offerings because I've made a conscious decision to keep God my number one. It's all about setting priorities. For your tithes and offerings, you may send it through online banking and deposit the amount to the following accounts of GCF North Inc. Union Bank, Banco de Oro, or Bank of the Philippine Islands. If you want to send your tithes and offerings through remittance centers or GCash, please contact Brother Nato Dima Felix. You may also bring your tithes and offerings and drop it into the offering box at the office at the second floor of New Domain Plaza, 19 Holy Spirit Drive, Don Antonio Heights, Barangay Holy Spirit, Quezon City. During office hours from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m., Please always remember the following tips for your safety and protection using online banking. For proper accounting, please send a photo of the deposit slip or confirmation receipt to Sister Ai de Jesus via messenger. Let us pray. Our great and awesome God, we give our tithes and offerings to you today, joyously and not begrudgingly. Your word says that whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and whoever sows generously will also reap generously. May we find abundant joy in offering our time, talents, and money to meet the needs of others and of the church. Help us to give freely, sacrificially, and cheerfully towards the work of your kingdom. You give us everything we need so that we may abound in every good work. Help us to be generous as well and to be faithful stewards of all the things that you are entrusting to us. 
We pray all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. Could you be healer to a heart that's been wounded in a battle that's never seen? Could you be teacher to a mind of confusion? Tell me what does this all mean? Are you deliverer? and feeling in chains Can you set my spirit free And just one more question Allow me this question Could you be Messiah to me Could you be Messiah to me Could you be father to a soul that's been abandoned by a world too busy to hear? Could you be friend to a helpless survivor? Can you take away my fears? I heard them all sharing this newfound conviction in them are you all that they make you to be and just one more question allow me this question could you be messiah please be messiah to me Our scripture reading is found in the book of Psalms, chapter 1, verses 1 to 6. Again, 
That is Psalm chapter 1, verses 1 to 6. Blessed is the one who does not walk in step with the wicked or stand in the way that sinners take or sit in the company of mockers, but whose delight is in the law of the Lord and who meditates on his law day and night. That person is like a tree planted by streams of water, which yields its fruit in season, and whose leaf does not wither, whatever they do prospers. Not so the wicked, they are like chaff that the wind blows away. Therefore, the wicked will not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the assembly of the righteous. For the Lord watches over the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked leads to destruction. Psalm chapter 1, verses 1 to 6. May God bless the reading of His word. It's a happy day, happy Sunday to everyone. Masayang umaga po sa inyong lahat. You know, because we are connected to Christ, we are blessed, and we are indeed happy people. And we can always be happy even in the midst of this very challenging time. Agree? And God is inviting us to be happy and to be lifted up despite of the bad news that we are hearing and seeing right now. So I entitled my message, How to Live a Happy Life, based on Psalm chapter 1, verses 1 to 6. You know, uh, for many people, for whatever reasons, people are unhappy because everybody has an idea of what would bring them happiness. And here are some. For others, owning something would bring them happiness. For example, if I have this money, I would be happy. If I have this uh, huge income, I would be happy. If I had this position, I would be happy. If I have this person, I would be happy. If I had this car, I would be happy. If I had this house, I would be happy. If I can go around the world, I would be happy. If I could marry that person, no? uh, I would be happy. And for others who are married, who are sorry because they are married, no? Uh, they say, if I would not have married this person, I would be happy. So therefore, happiness is only a matter of perspective, isn't it? Well, of course, uh, the Word of God, no, the inspired Word of God, the, the inerrant, the infallible Word of God, uh, this scripture has a lot to say about happiness. And that, that the world no, uh, obviously will not tell you. And so today we come to the book of Psalms, specifically Psalm chapter 1. Psalm chapter 1 is a wisdom psalm. And the reason we call it, no, that of course is because it gives a wise direction. And if you notice, it begins with the word blessed, no, where we get the word happy. So in verse 1, it says, blessed is the man. The word blessed in Hebrew is esher, no, means literally happy or how happy the person is. No? And this is written in plural form in this particular psalm. No? So it could be, uh, translated, oh, the joys or the happinesses, no? if there is such a word in English grammar. Or it could be translated, oh, how very happy is this person. And this is God's way of being happy. And I tell you, many people are madly pursuing happiness and yet they could not find it. Why? Because happiness is never found by direct pursuit. Happiness is an end result of another pursuit. When you pursue happiness, and when you pursue holiness, happiness will just come along. According to Jesus in Matthew chapter 6, verse 33, But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. So happiness is a result of our pursuit of seeking God's kingdom and his righteousness. Agree? And this is the word that comes out from the very mouth of Jesus. So what we are going to do right now in this particular psalm is to study it praise by praise, verse by verse. Anyway, we have only six verses for today and I will be highlighting uh, verses 1, to 3. No? And this chunk of verses basically describes the blessed man, the happy man, the happy woman, the happy person. And so to be a, a blessed or how to be happy person as best described by King David who wrote this particular psalm. So how to live a happy life based on Psalm chapter 1, verses 1 to 6. To live a blessed and happy and godly life, you need to, number one, 
stay away from bad influence from verse 1. So take note of the uh, highly poetic language in this particular verse no? that the author used. It says here, Blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked, nor stand in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of scornful. No? Have you noticed that each of this uh, phrase no, describes actions no? such as walking in the counsel of the wicked, standing in the way of sinners, sitting in the seat of mockers. No? This all describe the act of associating with people of influence, no? but people whose influence upon you will be nothing but negative. So far, everything is negative. It's all no, no, no. Do not walk, no? Do not associate, no? As if the writer is saying something like this. Oh, happy is the person who is marked by what he does not do. The people he does not hang out with. The places he does not go. So happy is the person who understands that no is the first step in many times to say yes to happiness. Even though does even though sometimes no it sounds good it it tastes uh, good no it feels good a happy person knows perfectly to say no to these things knows how to refuse those things and what are those things one bad counsel or bad advice he does not walk in the counsel of the wicked according to verse 1 so back in the bible times no it was pretty simple thing because most counsel that uh, you would receive from people occurred face to face. You would uh, sit down with them and you would uh, talk and they would uh, give you their advice, which is another word for counsel. Well, today, you know, it's no longer the case, no? Today, we have the ability to be powerfully influenced without ever seeing the face of the individual who is the, doing the influencing. All you have to do is go through and just read uh, an FB post or perhaps watch a video or uh, YouTube, no? Or some other website that is talking about this and that, that perhaps will uh, unconsciously influence you uh, with their bad counsel. Bad counsel comes in so many ways, no? especially with the presence of the social media. No? The, the psalmist tells us not to walk in the counsel of the ungodly or the wicked. And that is basically uh, me, no? refusing this, uh, their counsel rather, no? refusing what they are saying, refusing how they are attempting to influence you. That is obviously contrary to the word of God. So do not walk in the counsel of the wicked. So be careful who you, who you listen to. No? Be careful what you listen to. Someone says that there are two uh, quick ways to disaster. One, take no one's advice. Two, Take everyone's advice, no? There are some people who are isolated. They take no one's advice. They will perhaps say, No, don't tell me what to do. Huwag mo sabihan na dapat kong gawin. No, I won't ask your advice. No, I will try to solve this on my own. Uh, let me do it my way, no? Uh, and the end of this is apparently disaster. And the other one, when you take everyone's advice. You know, there are people who just follow everyone's uh, or uh, everyone else's advice. Uh, advice no and we know naman that everyone has an opinion on how you should live on how you should behave on how you should act kinakwadrado kanila sa gusto nilang mangyari it's not always the best idea it's not always a godly counsel it might be good intention counsel it might be uh, from your uh, well meaning friends from your uh, well concerned colleagues from your siblings or even from your very own family but it's not necessarily godly counsel and if and if you build according to your to every man's advice no you will surely do your crooked way and live a crooked life later uh, the end will be disastrous no another bad influence is bad association we have to say no to bad association for us not to be influenced by them the next phrase nor stand no in the path of sinners take note of the progression first you are walking and now you are standing. The word stand means to linger, to stay for a while, no? to loiter, to, to uh, hang around. And there is a wisdom here. If you walk in the footsteps of bad advice, soon you will stand among those who give it. No? Kapag nakinig ka sa kanila, mamaya kasama ka na nila. Nabilog na rin ang ulo mo. One page na kayo ngayon. And this psalm is full of wisdom. 
you are progressing from not so bad to bad then to worse no you've got to be careful who you you hang with no and paul said in first corinthians chapter 15 verse 33 bad company corrupts good character that's why we need to be careful in what we listen to and whose advice and who we hang with another way of refusing uh, bad influence is to say no to bad actions let us continue with verse one here it is uh it says no uh, nor sit in the seat of scoffers or scornful or mockers or sit in the company of mockers this very popular seat to take these days no if you sit in the seat of the scoffers, the seat of the scornful, the seat of the mockers, especially mocking the things of God, you will be very popular, no? Let me give you this illustration. I have uh, talked to some of my pastor friends whose uh, young people were sent to known colleges and university here in the Philippines who have uh, come out of those institutions. Uh, of course, I'm not against those in institutions. Huh? I'm just telling you the reality of the world today, no? Good Christians as they entered those colleges and university, and they will come out of those institutions with their faith shaken to its core. Because of the constant mocking of the things of God that takes place there, no? And I have known some godly people who came out of those colleges and universities now who also joined those uh, mockers, and now they are also mocking the things of God. Naging magaling ka nga, nasira naman ang pagkatao mo. At pagiging makadyos mo. And this is terrible. Imagine you are bombarded every day with those stuff. Mocking the things of God. Mocking the people of God. Mocking the living word of God. Surely, you will be affected, influenced by constant mocking of the things of God. And later, you find yourself being shaped in your thinking and in your morals. And perhaps you will be joining them. So be careful. So once again, just notice the progression. Walking first, then standing, and eventually you take seating uh, already, and at the end you go to that direction as well. So be careful. To combat this bad influence, first you must say no, no, and no. Do you want to be happy? Do you want to be godly? Do you want to be blessed? No? So that you can find joy and happiness? Then refuse. Say no by walking, not with a counsel of the wicked. Say no by uh, standing not in the way of sinners. Say no by sitting not on the seat of the mockers. Say no to go to that direction with them. Then you will become happy and a uh, blessed person. So a happy person is described by what he declines. No, uh, So refuse. Say no. So how to live a happy life? To live a happy life uh, to live a godly life, a blessed life, you need to, number one, stay away from bad influence. Second, delight yourself on God's word. Alright, so happy person is described. Here is the person who delights on God's word. It says in verse 2, But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and on his law he meditates day and night. So now, in verse 2, the psalmist, no? moves from what he does not do to what he does and notice what this attitude toward the uh, uh his attitude no toward the uh, uh, the scripture the bible his delight is in the law of the lord in short he finds his greatest pleasure in the law of the lord he looks forward to it why because this book no uh is the means toward an end and the end is an encounter with, of course, with the living God. I'm just simply saying, I want to know the Word of God so that I can get to know God, right? I want to encounter Him in a very personal way uh, through this book. And this book will do that for me, no? So, and surely you will encounter Him. And if you look at the historical context of this particular verse, you will surely be amazed. Why? Because when David, no? When King David wrote this psalm, the psalm is about, uh, uh, of course, the happy person, about the happy person who is delighting in the law of the Lord. And David is referring here in verse 2, no? Only to the Pentateuch, the five books of the Bible. Because those are available books at the time when he wrote this psalm. He was referring to the first five books of Moses. And he was talking literally about Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. Imagine only five books 
But now we have the 66 books of the Bible. This is more gasbord, kapatid. Panalo! We are feasting in reading the Word of God. And we have the entire Bible. We have abundant treasures of truth. Question, are you delighting in the law of the Lord? Are you delighting on God's Word? Look at verse 2. He meditates day and night. And the word meditate, I mean, uh, uh, biblical or scriptural meditation, it means you consciously, okay, uh, engage your mind and you focus upon the revealed truth of the word of God, the scripture. And the word meditate in Hebrew is haga, no? Which means to moan or to talk to oneself about, no? Like what we do in eating, our favorite uh, yummy food, no? Mmm, it's so, so good. Ang sarap-sarap naman ito. You are talking to yourself about it. You are uh, reacting to what you are eating, to what you are reading, no? That's the picture then of meditation. You are reading carefully, you are slowly chewing it and feeding on it. You slowly uh, uh, reading it, no? Uh, long enough to hear each word, to emphasize those words, and to say it out loud back to you, back to yourself, because you are delighting uh, yourself, no? You are delighting on, on God's Word. You are meditating on God's Word. In application, I suggest that when you read the Bible, the next time you meditate the Word of God, you, the next time uh, you do your devotional time, you try to slow down. Read it carefully and more slowly. You observe well. Uh, you chart uh, those segments, you diagram it, you do word study, learn the context, summarize the word for yourself, correlate all those findings, and draw application for immediate action. Do you know uh, that what you are reading, no, compared to other books on this planet, is only the book on earth no, that is alive, inspired, inerrant, infallible word of God, and that is the scripture. So if you want to live a happy life, learn to one is to refuse to stay away from bad influence. Two, delight on God's word. And finally, number three, in order to live a happy life, you have to flourish for God's glory. In verse three, it says, "He shall be, he shall uh, be like a tree." Here, David, no, likens the blessed and happy person with something alive, with something growing, with something uh, flourishing. You know, growth is a normal part of life. You expect growth uh, to happen, no? If there is a living thing, if you have a seed, you plant it on the ground and you water it and you expect to see results, right? You expect growth, no? There ought to be growth. And Christianity is more than obstetrics. It includes pediatrics and it should go all the way to the geriatric old age stage. So the three pictures, no? Growth, it also pictures permanence, no? It says, he shall be like a tree planted by the streams of water. No? The concept here is permanence. Planted, not pouted. No? Planted by rivers of water. And some, uh, and, and of course, the no, same word that uh, Jesus used or taught on John chapter 15 is the same idea when he said, abide in me, meaning remain in me. So it speaks of progress and permanence. Let's continue in verse 8. It says, that brings forth, no? Its fruit in its season, whose leaf also shall not wither, and whatever he does shall prosper. This verse speaks like a tree that is productive. In the next phrase, it says, who brings forth fruit in its season. You know, success in Christian life is not an overnight thing. It's a fruit in its season. It takes time to grow, but he brings forth uh, the fruit, no? If you spend long time reading the Bible, the, the results would be uh, happiness, spiritual activity, and of course, service. And, and if there is fruit, uh, it surely refreshes other people. Agree? Honestly, you want to be around with those blessed and happy people because you will be refreshed by them. Diba? You don't want to be around with those people who are always negative in their mood and attitude. Because surely they will sip your energy, sip your enthusiasm, sip your fire. They will absolutely drain you to the max, no? And at the end of the day, you will say to yourself, oh boy, I'm so drained, di ba? So be around with somebody who will fill your tank up and you will be refreshed. 
So be a blessing to others. So other people will be refreshed also. And that's uh, a happy person. No? Let me use this borrowed uh, illustration. I learned this when I was in high school. No? Taught by my catechism teacher. And I got converted uh, to biblical Christianity. It was also taught by my pastor who discipled me. They both said, in Israel, there are two popular uh, bodies of water. First is the Sea of Galilee in the north. Uh, the Sea of Galilee, there are farms. It is green. It is uh, beautiful. No? And then it empties into the uh, long Jordan River. The water gets down south to, the, to another big body of water called the Dead Sea. It's called Dead Sea no? because it is basically dead. Patay siya. Nothing lives in it no? except for some uh, microorganism. But it's dead. No? And it is a picture of two ways to live your life. The reason the Sea of Galilee is alive and the Dead Sea is dead is the Sea of Galilee has an inlet and an outlet. No? The, 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 this particular Dead Sea has only an inlet, no outlet. No? So it is with people. There are some people that are filled with life because they, they bring in, they take in, and there is growth, there is vibrancy, then they give out. They export water. No? And on the other hand, the Dead Sea naman, there are people who are dead. No? They are just like uh, takers. Give me, give me, give me. I want more. I need more. It's all intake. No outtake. It's like a dead sea. No? So to be like the Sea of Galilee, you receive and you give out. You nourish and you flourish. The happy person is productive, flourishing, and refreshing. Whose leaf shall not wither. It doesn't give up. It keeps on going. It doesn't quit. No? It's forever evergreen. No? Look at the end of the, this particular uh, chunk of uh, truth, no? And whatever he does shall prosper. And this is the kind of life we want. Here's the picture of a life who is a balanced uh, life, no? A person who is aligned with God. A person who is connected to God. And thus the rest of his or her life is in balance. Whether in personal, whether in spiritual, family, business, Leisure, all in balance, no? Because that person is connected to God and with God. And because of that connection, blessing comes out naturally. Everything he or she seems to touch is just blessed, no? He is happy through a lifetime. So if you want to live a happy life, here is the picture of a happy man, a blessed man, a happy woman, described by what he refuses to do, by what he delights and by, by what he does, no? Producing and flourishing for God's glory. Unlike the ungodly, the unbelievers mentioned in verses 4 to 5, is the antithesis of verses 1 to 3. The ungodly are like chaff, no? That the wind drives away. They won't stand and they will definitely, uh, they will definitely fail. And they will definitely fall. Observe the words used. The first word in verses 1 to 6. Okay, the first word is blessed, referring to the godly. And the last word, notice, no? The last word in verse 6, no? Perish, referring to the ungodly. So how to live a happy life? Stay away from bad influence, delight on God's word, flourish for God's glory. And that too is my prayer for you. Amen? Let us bow our heads and let us pray. Father, we are so thankful for the model uh, that you have provided for us today about the happy person, about the happy man, about the blessed man. Our prayer is to live that happy life. People are chasing happiness, but little they know that happiness is by product of holiness, of godliness, of blessedness. Indeed, a happy person is a blessed person. Help us, Father, to have a strong conviction to shun evil and say no to evil. Help us to always delight on your word so that we will grow and flourish for your people and for your glory and honor. In Jesus' name we pray, Amen and Amen. God bless you. Mabuhay po kayong lahat. See you next time.